Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters, and welcome to our review of Barbarian. Experience. This is perfectly natural. Now, uh, if you saw our YouTube short last night, we kind of had a, a real interesting time with this movie. This is definitely uh, a film that I think is best served with uh, knowing nothing about it. I'll just exactly. say that up front. And the other thing I will say up front is that with that, this is going to be tough to talk about without really diving into spoilers. So we're going to have a couple of minutes here just at the top where we can kind of give you very broad, spoiler-free kind of how we're feeling about it. Uh, but the rest of this review, I will put a little uh, graphic up that says spoilers is going to be very spoiler heavy because I just don't know how to talk about this without getting into specific details that uh, surprisingly the trailer did an excellent job of not giving away, which is very rare um, in today's day and age. But uh, Luke, I'm going to let you start this off. Uh, how do you feel about Barbarian? Well, uh, we talked about this. We did the little preview on the Sunday Scaries, and I mentioned that, you know, even from that first preview, I even mentioned the short that, I mean, I was sold on this film going into it. Um, and that trailer makes this film look very different, uh, like a very different tone, I would say. Something I, going into it, I didn't know what to expect uh, fully, but you kind of get a certain expectation when uh, you only see the, the very first first few clips of there especially with like um her arriving at the airbnb and you kind of get a connotation of what you think this film is really going to be about and it you have no idea so it's no. like i'm i am absolutely glad that i i you know you get tempted to click on those those articles that say something about it and you think oh maybe you know there's not going to be a spoiler there but you just never know. And maybe that they'll give away too much. And it's what we're trying not to do here. Whereas if you just um, listen to this pre spoilers, then maybe it'll just kind of give you that edge to go, go check it out. Um, overall, after sitting with this, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. It is absolutely such a different film. You cannot gauge it. Um, and again, like you said, it's, best going into the sitting down in that theater knowing nothing about this film yeah i agree man i really enjoyed this movie i was just so taken aback by so many choices that were made and just how the story decided to unfold because you're right you just don't see any of this coming and i know that that's kind of been the trend if you're just kind of clicking through youtube reviews as everybody has been saying that but i mean that's the honest to god truth you will not see uh, what's coming at all now mind you um, there's a little danger with that when saying that I feel and I want to preface this because I feel like you know if you go in there and you're just sitting there like I want to be absolutely blown away everything like what could this possibly be you know your mind's gonna run a bit now the reveal itself um, if you're not on board with what's going on like if this is something it's a it's kind of a it's how do I even say this, man? It's so tough. It's it's kind of a niche thing. So it's kind of like if you're not on board with what it ends up being, you may walk out of this very disappointed. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, tamper yourself a little bit, but just know that, like, it's refreshing to go into a movie that doesn't that isn't choreographed. That isn't like I can't sit there and say, because, you know, I don't know if you do this. I did this during this movie. Um you know, you watch the trailer. We go to the movies quite often, especially since we got the channel up and running. So I've seen this barbarian trailer seven or eight times. And, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like I kind of as we're going through the motions of the stuff we've seen in the trailer, you know, I'm kind of sitting there going like, OK, so this is where that's going to happen. And then we're going to get past this to where we've only see little flashes of what's coming next. And it's great to say that, you know, this movie does kind of prevent itself from doing that like it kind of upends you a little bit and shocks you in the sense that it's like no we're doing something else for a little while here and you're just gonna have to sit there and wait until we show you the rest and i always love that shit yeah and you know you have to really tote that line because 
sometimes you're going through these films and you can point out to say, oh, the, the, they're just doing this twist for the sake of doing the twist. And they want to keep the audience on their toes. And this choice maybe doesn't make the most sense, but that's the way they wanted to go with it. Now, this film here, I think, totes that line perfectly where Barbarian, it, they yes, they have lots of twists and turns in here, but it all makes sense. Um, the choices are there for a reason and it progresses the story even farther. So, you know, they kind of meld that uh, twist and turns with the storytelling. And I think it all works perfectly. Whereas there are films out there that try to do those twists and turns and it just feels generic. It feels um, so like mass produced in a sense where it's coming off a factory line and it's not genuine. Where here the, the story is taking those twists and turns, but it feels organic. It's like this is the next step in, in that. And yes, you can't call it. So um, I think that all worked. And like, you know, kind of going into this film of um, trying to verbalize of, of how I wanted to uh, kind of say this because I kind of put this a little bit in in the same aspect of like something um, uh, like Malignant where yeah. it's, kind, it, mm -hmm. it's kind of like um, now, I, Great you know, comparison. I, I think it takes a horror fan to like this film. Now I'm not saying every horror fan will love this film uh, or that you're less of a horror fan because you don't like this film, but I think it takes a horror fan to really understand this film. You know, it's like, I don't think a, this film may not hit with a general audience because of there's so many twists and turns and the kind of uh, narrative it has. But I think a lot of horror fans, it can resonate with. Yeah. And you as a horror fan, you'll appreciate this movie because it, at the end of the day, and I'll get into this more in the spoiler section, it's, it's kind of become something that, you know, I, you know, myself, I really appreciate these types of films, um, but it be kind of becomes this, like you said, with a malignant type thing where it's like, it is this niche. It's this kind of weird underground kind of like, you know, the movies we don't see too often anymore. You know, yes. this feels like, you know, if I can make great comparisons to this, I want to say um, like basket case and, um, you know, like uh, Malignant's a good one. But also uh, there was another movie, um, Castle Freak and stuff like that. It really lends itself to that kind of a genre in yes. a way. Um, and, you know, I, I think that like if you're into that kind of stuff, if you're kind of if you if you sell yourself on it and you like that stuff, then you're going to really love this movie. And I, I can say coming out of it that I really enjoyed this movie. Um, a few other things I want to highlight, too, just before we get into spoilers, is um, I thought the uh, direction and camera work uh, was phenomenal. I really thought I was impressed with that. Uh, there's a lot of great choices. There's a specific section uh, where it's filmed what seems mostly handheld in a way, um, and they kind of stick in a certain angle with somebody. And, you know, I thought that was really impressive. The use of lighting, um, I can make comparisons to like the descent. Because, uh, I mean, if you've seen the trailer, you know, they go down into this basement uh, and there's a lot of darkness in there uh, with very minimal light. And they they do really play with you with that. And, you know, it was I I genuinely uh, was creeped out by a few of the shots and everything. So I got to say the 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 stuff behind the camera is is great like every whoever's doing everything behind there they're they're doing a great job directing wise everything and i i gotta give props to all the actors in the film i think everybody uh sold their roles really well um there's a lot more comedy in this movie than i was expecting from the trailer um and you know kind of talking about the director of this he comes from a comedic background um and not to dive too deep here but it's really interesting to see a comparison between like a david gordon green who you know he comes from a comedic background too he's done some comedies and stuff it's what he's mostly well known for um and the comedy in those halloween movies doesn't really work for me but the comedy here works for me um so it's just like they they really just have an understanding whoever's writing this and kind of giving it to you and actor wise we're not spoiling anything if i bring up uh, particular actor are we no this his name is on the poster uh, i saw okay. that before we walked in so it's not a spoiler okay um specifically i wanted to talk about justin long um so because we're watching this film and there's a particular instance where um he's delivering some dialogue and it's very comedic um i think you may know what i'm talking about when he's he has a flashlight and maybe he's descending on some stairs yep. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's very comedic. And for me, I, you know, I'm going to attribute that to Justin Long because 
Mm -hmm. I think that dialogue in any other a lesser actor's hands would have come off so ham-fisted and weird that yeah. it would have taken me out. But I would like, agree. He adds a charm to yeah, that stuff. Like he just knows how to do it where it doesn't sound fake. It just sounds so natural. Um, the way he, his delivery and all that stuff that I buy it instantly. So yeah, some of it, some of the dialogue does get a little uh, comedic and maybe a little tongue in cheek, but the delivery from Justin Long, I think just works absolutely well. And there are some choices with his character in general where you could look at and be like, mm, I don't know if that would work because it's a little comedic, but he sells it so perfectly. And I, this is what I'll go into the writing here of creating that character and Justin Long bringing it to life. The, some of the choices that he makes where he finds himself in, in the positions that he does, I, I buy it because that character and um, kind of, I guess, uh, his headspace is really where he would be at in the instance that he finds himself in. So, like, I don't find it, I don't find it far fetched to for him to put himself in those situations. Like, uh, because it, you, again, you're toting that line of it may not work, but with the writing, uh, the motive behind it, and Justin Long's kind of follow through, I think it works perfectly. No, I agree. Um, so I guess we'll kind of wrap up our spoiler free part here. Um, I giving this a high recommendation again. Go into it uh, as if you're a horror fan, I think that you're going to love it. You're going to see a lot of shades of uh, things that are very niche, uh, you know, stuff from, I would say, you find in the 80s, you find today, you know, like you, you really find a great mix in this movie. Um, and I, I was really impressed with it. And I think like like Luke said, it, it's going to take a horror fan, I think, to appreciate every aspect of it and love it kind of like I am. But it's you know, to the general audience, I think you should go into this not knowing much, um, tampering your expectations slightly, but also just, you know, going into it very open minded. Don't shy away when certain things pop up and just say, oh, it's stupid. You know, let the movie take you on its journey. And I think you'll be really impressed. But I, I give this a high recommendation. Yeah. And for me, uh, I'm going to give it a high recommendation as well. Um, so, I mean, like, you're listening to us speak. Uh, I assume if you've wandered onto this channel or you've subscribed to this channel, you're a horror fan. But, you know, there's a, possibil <laughs> so. there's a possibility some people have wandered in that aren't really horror fans and wanted to see maybe is Barbarian for me. Um, so, if, in that aspect, it, okay, as a horror fan, it's a high recommend. Uh, I don't think, if you like something like The Black Phone, which I love The Black Phone, this this is not a black phone instance where you can you can look at the black phone and say oh maybe it's a thriller maybe it's a horror um, maybe it's suspense you know there's kind of all that melding there this film is unapologetically a horror film for horror fans it really works so yes if you're a horror fan looking for a horror film I think this works perfectly I think a general audience may have a tougher time for it uh, just because of uh, all the ups and downs in this film and. Um, you know, maybe the trailer has a selling point of of certain people in the film and maybe you don't you know, it's like sometimes you don't get what you're you pay for in a sense. So, um, again, this is a high wet recommend. But, um, you know, if you're not a horror fan, I, I don't know if it's for you or not. Very, very well put. Yes. So we're going to move on to spoilers here. So I'm putting a little spoiler banner up. So from here on out, if you have not seen Barbarian, uh, please click off this video. I, I can't stress it enough. Uh, come back to us after you've seen it, uh, whether that's in theaters this weekend, a few weeks from now, or you wait until it hits Blu-ray and streaming. Just I, I would really stress you don't want to know what we're about to talk about. Yeah. Um, but with that said, that's your warning. Yeah, man, this we kind of sat there for a minute after this movie and both were kind of like, you know, I don't know, I guess maybe from seeing movies with you for so long now, I I always whenever it's something this unique, different and just out there that I didn't expect, um, I always get a little worried that, you know, when I'm so high on something that you're you're going to be like, oh, that was OK or oh, that was kind of stupid. Um, but I was happy to hear that it seems like we're on the same page where we we really kind of fell into the ride of this movie and when they started revealing things that it was uh it was pretty good i was yeah. i was definitely happy with it you know and you know i was reflecting on that as well after you know we had left the theater and stuff like that and i would feel i honestly i feel like something like malignant um was kind of a turning point for me where um i could have dismissed that very easily and probably a few years i think i a few years ago i think i would have um and even now i think 
opening the channel back up and kind of diving more deeper into horror, like Abominable, you know, like I probably would have said, you know, a year, year and a half ago, that film was not for me, but like kind of being, uh, opening up and looking deeper into the horror realm, I, you know, I can kind of compartmentalize of what kind of horror is this, uh, a film we're going to end up, that's going to pop up on, um, this week's the Sunday scaries is going to be the stuff. And like, for me, I, I think a couple of years ago, that probably wouldn't have worked that well for me. But like, I, I'm, we'll talk about it down the line, but I'm absolutely sold on that film because it's like yeah. a certain kind of horror. It is like a basket case. Um, so it's like, you know, you, this, this falls right in line with it. So I was like, at, at that point of going into this film and um, I, we're in the spoilers right now. So um, as soon as uh, uh, Bill Skarsgård, it's kaput, um, which yeah. I, I absolutely not expecting. I was like, oh, that was a turn. What else are we going to do here? You know, and I was all sold in on the ride. You know, it was like one of those things where um, I, I was battling with my emotions because, again, I went into this film expecting something more so psychological, I think. Um, and I didn't really get that. I mean, there's a certain aspect of it there, but it's not really about that at all. Yeah, no, they really sell it like it's psychological presence maybe like a kind of like i i kind of got um this is a little weird one uh i think mostly just from the uh presentation in the trailer kind of that um is it as above so below uh yeah. film where it's like you know they're kind of just like i figured maybe they'd be going into these endless catacombs and you'd be seeing kind of like you know different things going on that messes with your mind a bit more but when this turned into an inbred creature feature kind of film, I was just like, holy shit, I did not see that coming. You said it best um, when we were sitting there in the theater talking about it, where you said you came into this movie, you know, knowing that you weren't going to expect what was going to happen. But if you would have said that that was what was going to happen, you you would never have guessed in a million years that that's yeah. where this movie was going. Yeah, because it, it turned out to be an extremely different different film. And honestly, where I... Okay, my head went to a, a couple different spaces here. Um, because when um, Tess arrives at, ho at the home and uh, Keith is already there, um, and they're kind of trying to figure out what exactly happened here and all this uh, the miscommunications, I thought um, we were going to end up where he was actually the owner of the home the whole time, and this was kind of a whole setup. And I mean... This goes into Bill Skarsgård, which we could talk about for a minute here. He sells it so perfectly that you're on edge not believing anything that he's saying. Um, so it's like you're waiting for that shoe to drop and be like, mm, okay, what is he doing here? You know, because mentioning the tea, mentioning the wine, you know, you, you're figuring that um, he's trying to put her at ease so that he can get her in a vulnerable spot and then kind of make his move in that sense. But I don't then, trust him at all. Yeah. Like, it's so hard to trust him. Especially look at like, the awkwardness of, you know, I think both of us chuckled where he's like, we have wine, uh, you have peanuts, we have tea, you know, and he's yeah, yeah. offering these things and he's kind of standing there and it's like very awkward. And, you know, that's his intention as an actor to kind of pull that off. And he does it so well when he's sitting at the table with the wine glasses. So awkward. And I think he does that so well. It sells it, again. It puts you in that mode of you're expecting one thing so that they can flip it on its head and give you another. Yeah, I think that, you know, with this of an advantage that bill Skarsgård kind of has and i don't know how long he's going to have it it could be for the rest of his career i mean say what you will um the it films are pretty divisive for us as well um you know like i i think the first one's real good the second one is pretty rough um but in my opinion he was always a standout in those movies and he owns that pennywise character i mean tim curry will always have a special spot in my heart. I think both these actors have really taken the character and done something great, but like for him to be so fresh off of it, where it's like, I haven't seen him in much of anything where I don't think anything at all since the last one. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a lie. Uh, he was in that, uh, movie with Tom Holland, the devil all the time. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I saw him in that, but uh, he was great in that as well, but it's just one of those things where you see him, and especially in a movie that you know is a horror movie. And, and I think your walls immediately go up. I think ever since Pennywise, uh, everybody's just going to immediately see him and think, I don't trust you completely. Yeah. And, you know, it's so refreshing with the fact that he was a genuinely good guy. 
in this movie. He was awkward. Like you said, he sold that really well. But like, you're right. We just couldn't figure it out. Even when he gets you more comfortable and they're on the they're on the couch, they're drinking wine. They're talking about, you know, their careers and what they're doing. And you get more comfortable. You really, um, you know, you really kind of get sucked into the same situation as our lead actress here. Now I got to pull up her name. Uh, because Georgina I know Smith, I believe. Georgina, was it? It was, uh, yeah, Georgina Campbell. Campbell, That's sorry. Was. Yeah, no, Georgina Campbell. Um, she is fantastic. I think that she carries this movie so well. But I think all three of the leads do a great job. Because I say all three of the leads because we do follow the perspective of, you know, Georgina Campbell, Justin Long, and, um, you know, Bill Skarsgård. Uh, and it's just one of those things where they all do a really fantastic job. And I think that like, you know, we, in those opening moments, especially we really feel the unease that she feels. So when she starts to get more comfortable, the audience gets more comfortable until yeah. we're pulled back again for a second. And we're like, okay, now I'm uncomfortable again. Now I don't know how to feel. And it's really props to the actors and the filmmaking in this movie to kind of really take you on that like up and down roller coaster because we know by this point we are just on an uphill trajectory and then once that shoe drops and the the ride tips like it's all downhill and everything's gonna go crazy so and you know like the tone the messing with the tone here where it's like uh bill skarsgård kind of um kind of puts us at ease a little bit when they start conversing and you know you see that she's more open when they figure out that they have a commonality in, in the jazz aspect of everything and then you know they're doing the um the bed sheets and the and all that stuff you know and it's all fun and games and then then they share this awkwardness of you know he's like smiling at her and uh it's like an awkward long pause of like you, you don't know why he's leaving not leaving and then she's like smiling at him and then waiting for him to leave and i think that was so well done because then that immediately puts you back on edge because you're like why isn't this guy leaving um and then for that to kind of uh culminate into the bill skarsgård death and then a hard cut in terms of and, and then we get into the introduction to justin long which is completely comedic total change of tone and i Absolutely. love it because it's again it's like all these ups and downs it's like an um uh, a graphic moment of horror a hard cut and then we're into um the justin long character that you know is singing with the radio and stuff like that and then uh we, we're kind of introduced it's kind of his story which again very current very interesting i don't really think i've seen um too many films kind of take on that issue yet uh, but it's definitely something that I think should be explored. And especially with the way, you know, it, it's a cop out to make uh, our one of our lead characters totally innocent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, that's the way you you think they're going to go. But they don't do that here. No, they really kind of because like it turns into kind of like a Me Too aspect where, yes. you know, um, we're in the spoilers. So Justin Long is uh, finding out from what are they producers on the, on the show that he's so. working on for the pilot that he's uh, attached to um, that his co-star uh, is, you know, filing a motion against him saying that he uh, raped her. And, you know, you don't know how to take it at first because he's obviously denying it. Uh, I thought it was really smart how they kind of leave you with that information for a while. You see him come home. He comes to this house because he owns all these properties um, and he kind of you feel bad for him because everybody's kind of distancing themselves because uh, you see that a lot in Hollywood, especially with big name firms and things like that. And then, you know, you're kind of like, well, I kind of hope he didn't do it. I kind of believe him. It's Justin Long. He's got this like, you know, automatic charisma and charm. If you're a fan of his like we are. I mean, we know him from Jeepers Creepers and all this stuff. So it's like, you know, dodgeball. You want to yeah, dodgeball. I mean, like all these other movies, like he's a great guy. So when they kind of pull the rug out from under you in a specific scene in the club where he kind of explains the situation. And then you're just like, Oh fuck. Okay. Yeah. I kind of get the picture here. Like uh, you're not, you're not innocent at all. Like, I mean, like at least that's how I took it. And I mean, I know it's like, it could, we don't know the other side of the story. So, I mean, it could have gone another way, but like the way that it's said, and then the development of his character even further, it's yeah. just, it's clear as day that he's not a great guy. 
Yeah, and, um, and like for me, the way it's, you know, because I guess they kind of play it as two sides to every story, but even the way Justin Long presents it seems guilt on his his side of things. You know what I mean? Where, you know, I, I'm a eye of the tiger. I zero in. You know, I'm a persistent guy. You can kind of sell tell even um if he believes he's innocent that as a objective third person uh watching the situation unfold that he isn't really um innocent in any sense and that's kind of like one of those things where uh it gives you uh layers to the onion of uh am i with this character am i not with this character but i feel bad for him when certain circumstances happen now how do i feel as a person and then we also see him struggle with that where he's like uh, he calls her and apologizes and he goes, oh, you know, if you call me back, I'll ap- apologize to you. And then later on, he has a little bit of a breakdown uh, after he shoots Tess and he goes, I'm responsible for this. And they're sitting by the fire and he goes, am I a bad person? You know, it's kind of like these, this back and forth where, you know, this is complex storytelling, complex character work. Whereas instead of it, we draw the line of good and bad, we're in shades of gray here. And I think that's absolutely smart uh, screenwriting acting character work everything yeah i agree and the coming down to the wire here on the review because i don't want to push it too long i think it's safe to say that yeah we're gonna we're gonna probably cover this movie down the road on uh splatter cast i i think that we're it's unique enough and i think there's enough here that we could definitely you know unpack a handful of modern horror stuff now that i feel like is totally worthy of like a really deep dive because usually we we stick back you know i think the most current thing we've done is is um oh man what was it um sinister sinister yes and so it's like i there's a handful of things i'd love to discuss now and this is one of them oh yeah um but i want to just talk about richard brake and how his character is introduced and just what they end up doing with him. Because you called it. I mean, like, you know, whether that's disappointing or not, I didn't think it was because it's like, you know, by this point, I'm so sucked into the journey. It didn't matter. But, like, within the first five minutes, you're like, yeah, he's take, he's abducting women. And he's taking them into his basement where he's making these little catacombs. And he's impregnating them. What I didn't uh, really anticipate after we talked about that was that he's then from what the the homeless guy implies is that he's then raising the children and having sex with the children and having sex with their children. And it's just this horrible fucking like, like 40 years worth of incest. And that's how we get this monster or this, this, this horrible uh, like deformed mother thing that they just, they have it on uh, Google is just the mother. And I think in the credits, it was the mother. Um, But like, yeah, I mean, what an interesting way to take this story. Like you said, I, I never would have seen that coming. Um, Richard Brake has very limited screen time. He doesn't say a whole lot, but he is intimidating and you really get his thought process in his scenes. You understand what he's doing. Um, it was so uncomfortable, kind of, because we hadn't had it fully confirmed with us yet what was going on, but he's going to yeah. the store. He's buying stuff for um, a home birth and everything and uh it's just all these the, these really uncomfortable scenes with him and i mean i i thought he was excellent i mean i know he's a rob zombie regular but i've seen him in a lot of other stuff too and i think that he's just got an aura about him that's just a creep factor in general but i mean this was a perfect role for for him and i wish my only real complaint i would say is not even a, a valid complaint because it's like, of course, with only an hour, like it's an hour and 40 minutes or so, um, we're not going to get that much deeper into his backstory. But, man, I want to know more about what's going on there. Like, how did this happen? Why is he doing this? But again, like with the black phone, we don't really need to know. What yeah. they give us is enough. And it's creepy enough. And it's not the focus of the movie. Yeah. But it's there, and it's just to give you a little backstory and to show you what's going on and really set the stage for why this monstrous thing is living in these catacombs underneath this home. And again, perfect casting uh, of Richard Brake because, yeah, like you said, there isn't that much dialogue there. He doesn't do that much, but he is an actor that has such an unsettling aura about him that he doesn't really need to say anything. I mean, him just driving to the supermarket in shopping and then zeroing in on a woman that's shopping as well um it is unsettling enough him going through her house and leaving uh, a window unlocked you know is like absolutely um uh, unsettling and it's 
it's like they knew what they were doing with the casting there. So I think that was absolutely perfect. Um, and the, again, again, the, the, like the time jumps that they do here, because that's another hard cut of, we get transported back to kind of a simpler time. And what we're, we're kind of seeing where, what the neighborhood used to look like and the dynamics that used to play there, where he's talking to the neighbor about, Oh, there's going to be a sign on my front lawn tomorrow where the, the, uh, horrors that are, are inside the walls of the, the next door neighbor, then he has no idea uh, about, you know what I mean? And, um, the, interesting things of i i don't know if we're ever really given his name but he's wearing a worker's uniform and it's it says carlos on it his and, name is frank i did catch that. okay and, and so his neighbor is talking to him where he's wearing a jumpsuit that's named carlos and does not make a comment on it you know what i mean so i think i think there are a lot of layers again here of you know uh, kind of like an american psycho vibe where no one really cares about what's going on with anyone else uh they're only living their lives so um, and not getting into those backstories, like, um, which I love because, you know, I think there is, um, uh, you know, it could be chalked up as horrible storytelling when you go into a film and you're like, well, this didn't make sense to connect to this. And yeah, that is bad storytelling, but I love a film when you come out of it and you're like, I would love to see more of that character. Like what's his story or, uh, how did they get there? You know? So it's like, those are the good questions. And I think, I think barbarian leaves you with a lot of good questions. No, I agree, but I think I'm going to have to cut it off there. As we said, we're going to do a splatter cast on this at some point. Uh, I'd say probably soon after this one comes out on Blu-ray would be a nice time because it'll yeah. probably be, you know, close to the middle of winter by then. So we'll, we'll have a lot of time to really sit down and digest this. Um, it's I'm picking it up. As you guys heard, if you've been watching us through the whole review here, this is a high recommendation from me. Um, I, I enjoyed this. Um, I don't think I'm going to get a chance to see it again because we have so much stuff coming out and so much content we're working on. But uh, when it does come out on Blu-ray, it'll be a pickup for me. And I just got to say, um, before you give your final thoughts here, Luke, is just like, what a year for horror we have been having. I mean, if I'm just I just out of curiosity here, just typed in horror 2022 just to kind of go down memory lane here. And I mean, we've had X, we've had Nope, we've had Prey. Um, I hear Fresh is great. I have not seen that. Fresh is definitely um, worth a watch. I, I did see it. Yeah. And I mean, even more here, we've had The Cursed. Uh, um, and just like so many movies, The Black Phone, like we said, uh, even ones that we weren't huge on, but we had like Scream and stuff like that. So like horror is just having a year and we still have Hellraiser. Halloween ends, all this stuff coming We're up. We're not even into October. And no. October is absolutely stacked. It is stacked. I mean, this month is stacked. Next week, we have Pearl. Yeah. So, And that's a sequel to X, which came out in March, which I still, every time we talk about that, I'm just like, that's fucking crazy. Um, so it's just like, it's, it's a stacked year, man. And I'm so happy to say that Barbarian uh, was better than I thought it was going to be. And uh, I definitely recommend if you're a horror fan, go out and see this film, man. It's awesome. And if you have already seen it, let us know what you thought, because uh, this is great. Take it away. Uh, you know, I'm with you uh, on the, what a year horror has had so far. Um, you know, I I was very intrigued by the Barbarian uh, trailer when I first had seen it. Um, going into the theater, I was excited because I did see some of those headlines. And I was like, OK, so we have some expectations here. So. Um, you know, I was hoping to be pleasantly uh, surprised and I was, uh, because they gave me something completely different, something I didn't know I needed. Um, so, uh, I was very excited for this film. Again, I, I will pick this up on Blu-ray as well. Uh, I really hope there's a commentary here. I'm very excited to kind of, you know, we're only days into this film's release. Um, and I can't wait to see kind of more articles, deep dives into this film. Maybe, you know, once they interview the director a little bit more and kind of, see any underlying themes in kind of uh, what went into make this film. So I'm really hoping we do get those commentaries because uh, this is something, I, you know, I'm going to throw on regularly. Um, so, you know, I find this different than the black phone, but different in a good way. And mm -hmm. um, it's like, they're both great films, just different in the horror realms. Um, both original and, yes. and a lot of original stuff. Yes. Yeah. Here. A lot yeah. of great surprises. A lot mm -hmm. of great surprises. Um, oh yeah. So this one, a high recommend for me as well. Um, definitely worth owning. Um, yeah, definitely run out. 
I'm assuming if you got through the spoiler section of here, you've hopefully seen this. So go see it again. Absolutely. But all right, guys, it's going to wrap us up here for our Barbarian review. Um, as far as everything else we got going on on the channel, we, of course, have another episode of Splattercast dropping on Monday. So keep your eyes out for that. That was a fun episode. Um, as well as follow us up on Instagram and Twitter at Splattercast Pod, where you can keep up with us. We're posting lots of fun stuff on there. I just got a new tattoo, and I got to post a video on that on Instagram. So it's kind of a fun story. If you're a Friday the 13th fan, you might like it. Um, and yeah, I mean, other than that, we have the Sunday scaries coming up, so you can check out uh, this upcoming weekend's episode on Sunday, as well as last week's episode, which has already been posted. And yeah, we got a lot of good content coming your way as stated. We'll have a review for Pearl next week. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just a, a lot on the docket. So if, uh, you like what we're doing here and you feel like we're doing a good job and we deserve it, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We always have a constant flow of content for you. And, uh, yeah, that about wraps it up for me. Luke, you got anything for the folks? No, just keep, stay posted. October is going to be a busy month for us. Um, and, uh, we're eager to review as much horror as we can. Absolutely. But yeah, until next time, guys, I'm Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember, stay scared. <laughs>